So today I wanted to give a uh, more detailed explanation about um, how to take care of your fruit trees, whether they're indoors or outdoors or combination of in and outdoor fruit trees, especially as we approach the, uh, the winter period. So this will be a recap of how to do the proper maintenance for your fruit trees uh, in the fall and winter period time. So what's going to happen is um, you probably have been taking care of your fruit trees during the spring and summer. And as we head into the fall and winter time, uh, I'm going to assume that you've been using this uh, neem oil to take care of any insects and bug problems and some of the diseases uh, throughout the uh, growing season. Now I went ahead and I've used neem oil a number of times on my pear tree specifically and then a little bit on my apple trees and not so much on my uh, dwarf uh, Meyer lemon trees or my Setsuma orange tree but I did go ahead and any extra uh, solution of neem oil I had in my spray bottle I went ahead and just casually sprayed the undersides and the top of the leaves and some of the bark area just to give it uh, to not waste any of the solution although it looked like um, I've been very lucky that uh, I haven't had it. I haven't had any diseases or bug infestation problems on my citrus trees. So let's go into the fall. So typically, what happens is, is in the fall, um, before the rains come, you want to use something called a liquid copper fungicide. So what happens is, is here, especially in the Pacific Northwest. The rain actually brings a lot of diseases, whether it's through the rain, through the wind, as it's blowing around. There's a lot more diseases in the air and in the water uh, that kind of get onto the leaves and onto the bark. And so that's why it's really important to use that liquid copper fungicide before the rain falls. Now, if you do uh, miss that opportunity and it's already starting to rain, it's okay. Just find a day that isn't raining, uh, where it won't rain for the day. Uh, where you know we want to have it hopefully above 40 degrees we want it to um, basically be a windless day and we'd want to make sure that uh, it doesn't rain that day so that way the the solution doesn't just wash off so I'll, uh, I picked earlier in the fall I picked a day that wasn't raining but I knew that rain was coming for a number I think uh, the week I picked to spray my uh, fruit trees was a day where I looked at the kind of the weather pattern and the weather schedule and it looked like it was going to rain five of the next seven days and I thought we kind of hit that period where the fall rains were coming here in the Pacific Northwest. So I picked a day that was rainless, windless, and above 40 degrees and I went ahead and sprayed all my fruit trees uh, with copper fungicide. Now, after the copper fungicide spray and after the post leaf phase, something I didn't really explain well enough, is uh, any trees that are in the ground and any trees that are going to stay outside. So any citrus trees that you're going to bring indoors or any potted trees that you're going to bring indoors, what you're not going to do is you're not going to use this horticulture oil and dormant spray. For any trees um, that are going to stay outdoors or planted in the ground, you're going to go ahead and spray that uh, anywhere from about uh, 10 to 14 days after the copper fungus I sprayed. You're going to go ahead and spray the uh, outdoor fruit trees or any potted fruit trees. Uh, you're going to spray them with the horticulture dormant oil. Uh, approximately about two weeks after uh, you've done the copper fungicide spraying. Now, same situation. You're going to try to pick a, uh, a day that's not raining. Um, and then you're going to pick a day that's above 40 degrees and a, and a day that uh, is windless. Uh, much better for that situation. Now, once you've done that, let's talk about what you're going to do with your citrus trees that are going indoors. So let me turn around here and these are the two citrus trees. Now this year I'm not going to go ahead and bother to bring them indoors. I just um, have too much going on plus I might be traveling for work. And so I'm just going to go ahead and leave them out here. Now typically what happens is, is it fruits again, it flowers and fruits again in the winter time. And so as you can see I'm starting to get some flower buds on the bigger tree. And if you look at the smaller bush lemon. Uh, they're almost ready to uh, bloom on the smaller bush variety of the Meyer lemon tree. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is um, I'm going to go ahead and leave this alone. It's already been sprayed. 
and I don't spray fruit trees uh, or I don't spray citrus trees with the dormant oil. The dormant oil is only the trees that lose its leaves. So my pear tree and my apple tree that don't have any leaves on it, I spray it with dormant oil, right? Because it needs so many chilled days on apple trees and pear trees for it to go dormant and then be able to produce uh, fruit the following year. And so it loses its leaves and goes into a dormant stage. Now, when it comes to citrus trees, my orange tree and my lemon trees, they don't go to a dormant cycle. So there's no need to spray it with that uh, dormant spray. So all I'll do is the uh, copper fungicide after I've already been using neem oil on an ongoing basis. Now, if I was to bring these um, Meyer lemon bushes and the dwarf Meyer lemon uh, tree indoors like I did last year, what I would have done was I would have taken some dishy, uh, dish soapy water and an old scrub pad and I would have scrubbed underneath the leaves, all in the branches, in the corners, and in the Y sections. And I would have found every nook and cranny and I would have gone ahead and spray, uh, scrubbed that with a soapy dishwasher. Then I would have let it air dry for a couple hours and then I would have come out here and sprayed it one last time with neem, neem oil spray before bringing them indoors. Now just FYI, whether you're watering your trees um, that are not in the ground but they're in pots or buckets or you're going to go ahead and um, water your trees indoors. Make sure on the watering cycle you use room temperature water. You don't want to use ice cold freezing water from the tap water, especially in the wintertime because it'll just go ahead and shock your plants. So I typically take these old cranberry or milk jugs and I fill them with water and I don't seal it. I let it uh, aerate because, you know, there's chemicals and other stuff that they add into our drinking water. And so what I do is I'll have about three to five of these empty bottles, uh, fill them up with uh, tap water and I'll let it aerate. And then when it uh, when my water meter stick shows me that I need to water my uh, Meyer lemon trees here, I'll go ahead and um, I'll water them. And the key with watering, like I told you before, is you don't want to do frequent watering. You want to do infrequent watering, uh, but you want to water it deeply. So don't do any shallow watering. You want to do it, uh, space out your watering cycle where you do it deeply, but thoroughly and infrequently. Um, of course, by using the water meter stick, you'll kind of be able to tell like how closely you can wait uh, before you water it. So I kind of wait until it just gets to the very first line that shows that it's about dry and then I go ahead and water it and I do a real thorough deep watering. So I'll come out here and bring at least two jugs for each of these potted Meyer lemon bushes and I'll water it very deeply, make sure it gets to the bottom, it drains through. I water it again just to make sure that every little part of the soil that was dry is, uh, is watered and then uh, that is my deep watering. And then what I'll do is um, I'll go ahead and fill those jugs back up with water and I'll let it, um, I actually put them by the fireplace and let them basically get back up to room temperature and I leave the tops off so that way it kind of aerates. <clears throat> now going into um, the next step, I wanted to talk about these um, fabric tree, uh, tree jackets that I got. So this one here is more of the, um, the cloth kind and um, it actually allows a little bit of breathability, but it allows to it allows your trees to survive the frost in the winter time. Now I have another one out here. Um, these are both cloth ones, but I have another one uh, inside that is more of a vinyl material. It actually can handle a lot colder weathers. And um, what I basically do is, um, if I know that there's going to be a lot of cold weather coming through here, I'll go ahead and I might use the, I might use the nylon uh, shrub and tree jacket, which uh, keeps a little bit more of the heat in, and it's a lot thicker in material, and it actually uh, protects the trees at an even colder temperature. But here in the Pacific Northwest, we don't get a lot of really freezing cold weather for days on end. So I'm not too concerned about it. Um, so more than likely, um, I'll probably go ahead and leave these uh, bushes, these citrus bushes that are gonna stay outdoors this winter. 
Uh, I probably won't keep them covered unless we get a lot of freezing weather for days on end. And even in the daytime, it doesn't get uh, warm. I'll go ahead and just uh, not bother with the tree and shrub jacket. Now, regarding the, the, the pear tree over there, I'm probably going to go ahead and I do, I had, a, I had a tree shrub jacket on there, but I, uh, because of the wind, it came off and I really should put it back on. I was talking to a number of horticulturists and we were discussing this situation. Now, you know, in a lot of these apple orchards here in the Pacific Northwest and, and pear orchards, uh, they don't have tree jackets and tree shrub jackets. Um, cloth coverings but the reason for that is because their trees are so large now my, this tree here is uh, we'll say it's about eight or nine feet tall now I have a jacket that can go on here and it'll be really uh, ill fit and so I'll just have to kind of make sure to uh, basically get some rocks and uh, tie it down so it doesn't blow away like it did last time now the key of why I would why it's recommended that I put a tree shrub jacket onto this pear tree is because although uh, the moss won't be laying their eggs, a lot of other bugs and insects uh, can come and fly into the branches and it can go into the nooks and crannies and crevices and they can go ahead and lay eggs still. And uh, we have a bit of a little bit warmer temperature than some of the other places like Minnesota or way up north. And so um, you always put yourself at risk um, in the winter time when this tree is going dormant um, of having bugs and insects lay their eggs on there so they recommended why don't you just go ahead and cover it um, since the tree can be covered now you know in the next two three four five years when this tree gets too tall and I don't have a jacket that fits it then that's perfectly fine you know I won't be able to cover it but as of right now since it's still kind of in its immature phase uh, it's recommended that I go ahead and use that tree shrub jacket that I have and I'll go ahead and cover it. It'll help keep the bugs away, help uh, make sure that uh, they're not laying their eggs on my uh, pear tree. Now going over here, I went ahead and lined up my, um, I lined up here my, um, my blueberry plants. They're starting to kind of they're starting to uh, change uh, the colors on their leaves. And uh, as you can tell on this one, uh, a lot of the leaves have already come off. Now in terms of the uh, dwarf apple tree, uh, it looks pretty good. I did a water meter test and it doesn't need any water. It uh, is under this overhang, which I like, uh, but even on uh, windy days, if it's raining, it'll go ahead and blow some rain onto here. So self waters, waters. So I haven't really actually had to bother with watering. Uh, this apple tree over the last uh, even in the last month now the reason why this uh, blueberry bush is out here is yesterday I did a uh, water meter test and it showed it being almost dry in terms of uh, needing to be watered and I knew it was going to rain today and so I went ahead and left it out here last night and uh, uh, I would rather water my plants with natural water because it's a little more acidic and blueberries as I told you before are acidic loving plants so I'll go ahead and leave it out there and let it uh, self water through uh, the rain today and then what I'll do is um, I'll go ahead and uh, probably when I uh, get back uh, from the office later today I'll go ahead and bring it and put it underneath the, uh, the roof overhang now um let me go through a little bit more here so let's say that you bring your citrus trees indoors so you've already went ahead and scrubbed it down you sprayed it one last time with neem oil spray and then you brought it indoors now as it's flowering it's going to grow a lot better of course indoors with grow lights and if it's flowering it'll fruit a lot better and a lot more quickly than if it, the tree is left outdoors but regardless of whatever you do whether you keep them indoors or outdoors uh, that soil right there uh, needs to be slightly acidic and I kind of gave you the numbers on the lemon trees before and so what I do is I take these um, I take these uh, old recycled Jiffy peat pellet pots and I do have peat moss but I like to use you know recycle and use my other stuff and so in this bag here I have these um, recycled uh, used peat pellet pods and so what I do is I'll take a couple of those off, take the uh, netting on the outside out, and then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and slightly sprinkle them, break them, uh, break them apart, and I'll go ahead and put them 
uh, on top of the soil and uh, I'll use my finger or, or a chopstick and I'll just kind of rake it in there and so that way it's in the first uh, inch or so uh, of the topsoil and then I usually do that before I water so that way when I water it kind of seeps right in and that naturally helps uh, keep the soil slightly acidic which is what citrus uh, trees love and then when it comes to the blueberry plants um, I'll probably use two or three of the peat pellet pots because Blueberries really need more acidic soil. You can't almost, you can't almost over acidify uh, blueberry plants, assuming you're not using, you know, artificial ingredients or like uh, some sort of uh, copper, copper liquid, uh, uh, liquid or, or some sort of chelated um, liquid iron. Um, so it, typically, what happens is the soil within pot of blueberry plants will get more alkaline over time and so what i'll do is i'll take anywhere from two to five of the used jiffy peat pellet pods and i'll break them up uh, break them down kind of uh, make them into smaller pieces and and then i'll kind of work the top inch or two of the soil and then when i water or it rains like it is today and naturally raining it'll go ahead and break down and keep the soil acidic for the blueberry pants so that's a little bit about uh, the maintenance for your citrus trees. Always make sure you're checking your leaves to make sure they're healthy. Uh, there's a couple of leaves here that are turning a little bit yellow. It, it, did, did, it did get a little bit too much rain here uh, initially when I had in the buckets. I kind of left them outdoors and I had uh, three or four days of overwatering. And so I went ahead and put it all, uh, underneath this roof overhang. Uh, one thing I kind of like um, is that it gets a little bit of protection because I have the car right here. So it gets a little bit of protection from the wind. And then also it does get sometimes a little too windy out here. And so it'll topple over. And so I like the fact that it's staying out of the rain most of the time. Um, I'll do my own self-watering. And then on top of that, uh, it gets a little bit of protection from the wind. So that way late at night, if it's really windy out here, it doesn't uh, topple over. But also... Um, you know, I, I think it keeps the pots a little bit warmer and I put it, uh, I put a pot within a pot. And so there is my arrow pot, my grow pot. And then inside that I have that plastic bigger pot. And so it uh, hopefully will keep the, um, the citrus tree a little bit warmer than if it was just by itself. Now, if you are bringing your indoor lemon tree in, you are going to have to periodically, um, um, fertilize it and I've realized over time after using a variety of products for my dwarf citrus Meyer lemon bushes and trees uh, the ones that I bring in for the winter time they do really well with this thing called Dyna Grow Foliage Pro liquid plant food the 936 variety and as you see I already went ahead and labeled it I use it twice monthly and indoor use only this spray is only for indoor use only and so I'll go ahead and use this um, twice a month for my indoor citrus trees. But this year, as I said before, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and keep my trees outdoors. I've got a lot of work going on. I'll probably be leaving out of town. It's just easier for me to manage. Now, if we have a really uh, tough cold spell coming up and I'm worried about the damage uh, of too much freezing weather, um, at at or below freezing temperatures, I'll probably need to bring in my lemon trees. I'm pretty lucky here in the Pacific Northwest because uh, we have enough warm temperatures and we have very few isolated freezing temperatures at night and not pretty much don't get any of those days in the in the daytime um, I'll be able to kind of leave them out here without worrying too much about it but I'll monitor it over the you know over the over the winter here and see how the schedule looks but for this year I'm gonna go ahead and leave them out here and see how it ha uh, how it goes now uh, another topic that I had brought up uh, with your citrus trees is is any dead broken diseased um, dead looking uh, uh, crossed limbs on your Meyer lemon bush or lemon tree or any citrus for that matter it's important to go ahead and come through here and take a look and see hey do I need to prune back or prune the tips of my citrus trees 
Now, after each growth cycle, I do come through here, and I just noticed one here that d didn't get cut. So what I'll come through here, and I'll get some sterile shears, and that branch right there is dead, and I'll go ahead and snip that away. And snipping that is really a good aspect for these citrus trees because what it does is it tells the tree to spur additional growth. And so that's why I kind of like snipping the tips of it. At least, like, I would go ahead and come through here. And it looks like uh, that portion on the top might be dead. And I'll snip it back another inch or so. And it'll help tell the tree to spur additional new growth, which is what we want. And we want it to be healthy, growing even bigger. We want it to keep on uh, adding additional branches and root systems uh, at the bottom. And so what I'll do is I'll come through here later today. And I'll go ahead and snip that part of the dead branch but I'll cut it back another inch or so and hopefully tell the tree to go ahead and spur some additional growth so I'll come through here that branch is dead right there you can see it from the tip there so I'll go ahead and cut it back and hopefully that'll spur additional growth into the tree now when it comes to fertilizing just the FYI the indoor citrus trees I will not fertilize until um, until the fruit has set so these flowers over here on the citrus trees, once they set and they open up, they open the flowers open up first and the fruit sets to be about a dime size. Then what I'll do is I'll come through here, whether they're indoors or outdoors actually, I'll go through here and hit it with a little bit of fertilizer because it needs that extra plant food uh, in order to be successful. Now, because those ones are gonna be outdoors, I'm gonna use that outdoor fertilizer that I showed you before <coughs> excuse me and so what i'll do is i hit it um with the outdoor um citrus uh, plant food and then if those were if those trees would have been indoors like it was last year i would have gone ahead and used the foliage pro so that's a little bit about how to take care of your citrus trees and uh, a little bit about the other fruit trees too. If you have any further questions, uh, give me a or send me a message and I'll go ahead and try to answer the best I can. Thanks and have a great day.